Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wheels Live here at Wheels PH. We are so excited to share with you today's special episode as part of the Philippine Stars 36th anniversary celebration this month. And of course, we would like to acknowledge the sponsors who made this event possible. Hino Motors, Honda, Isuzu, Kia, MG, Mitsubishi, Shell, Suzuki, and Volvo. And speaking of celebration, bukod sa ating special episode ng Wheels Live today, syempre may inihanda pa kaming something special para sa inyo. Tomorrow, we will be having a special Wheels issue on the paper. So make sure that you grab a copy para naman you don't miss out sa mga magaganda at interesting na articles na naka-feature dito. For those who are interested in sustainability in the automotive interest in the automotive industry, di ba sobrang interesting ng topic na yun, We have an article entitled "The Electric Revolution: Industry Strides Toward a Sustainable Future." Like that's really a nice concept. At eto pa, we have an article about the rise of the Asian marks. But wait. What if walang nagde-deliver ng paper in your neighborhood? Well, worry no more because the Philippine Star is also available on the go through our app, especially if you want to go paperless. Nandon din yung ating Wheels Special Edition. So please make sure that you visit www.philstarsubscribe.com whether on print or on your mobile device. We got you covered, okay? So, to officially start the event, let me introduce myself. My name is Angel Rivero, a writer and host for Fields for Wheels PH here at Philippine Star. And at home, I am enjoying my life as a new mom. Today, join me as I drive the show together with Mr. Wheels PH himself, Manny De Los Reyes. So you see, Manny De Los Reyes, he is the motoring editor of Wheels.ph as well as its print edition. He has been writing about cars since 1995. His life has been deeply intertwined with cars, having cleaned and maintained the family cars as a teenager, operating a paint shop, and entering national car shows in college before joining Nissan after graduation. He handled car brands as a copywriter afterwards. Today, when he's not testing or writing about cars or attending motoring events, he is home reading novels or playing with his Shih Tzu. Let's give it up for Mr. Manny De Los Reyes. Woohoo! Hi, Manny. Kumusta ka na? Thank you, Angel. Ang haba na intro mo, ha. Parang, I can see <laughs> Every, my life. Ang haba din ng career mo, eh. Kaya parang yun yung equivalent <laughs> na description. Congratulations on your new baby. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's actually very fulfilling and uh, she's very precious indeed. <laughs> we we have so much in store for everyone today. Pag-uusapan, to be honest. For those tuning in with us, make sure you comment down below if you want to be part of the conversation. We will read out some of your comments later on. At syempre, part of the celebration ng 36th anniversary ng Philippine star ang lahat ng ito. How do you feel, Manny, about our 36th anniversary? Can you believe it? Oh, did Manny freeze? Or is, let's see, ano nangyari sa ating, okay, ayan, meron lang tayong konting internet slow down welcome to the philippines but that won't stop us from celebrating our 36th anniversary here at wheels.ph so you know the philippine stars 36th anniversary has a theme and it's called the next page bakit the next page kasi parang yun yung the future yun yung parang nandito ka pa lang sa present tense pero Binabasa mo na yung next page upang ma-anticipate yung mga pagbabago, yung mga trends. And because we are in the automotive industry, then we are talking about the upcoming trends when it comes to cars. Cars 
and just motoring in general, even mga cyclists, di ba? Dahil yung mga nagbibisikleta, mobility din yan. So, itatap din natin yung topic na yan. It's, it's very, very interesting. And I really hope that um, you all join in and share your thoughts. And let us know if you have insights about what you think will be the future of motoring, diba? So um, the theme na the next page is um, challenging us to look forward to what's ahead of us and to reimagine everything. Kasi pumapasok na yung electric cars and then marami na hybrid and then marami ring new technology. Are we really phasing out diesel soon? Are we getting rid of internal combustion engines eventually? Mangyayari ba yan sa Southeast Asia or mala pang first world lang yan? So lots of things to tackle and to think about. Um, we rethink the way we currently do things and reconnect with our values and commitments. Diba? That is what the Philippine Star aims for us to do. It wants to present us on a platter, siguro these, these ideas and concepts para makapagtalastasan tayo, <laughs> di ba? Ng ating mga, ng katalinuhan. So we can um, think about these things and so we can share and also um, maybe argue a bit na hindi, hindi naman, hindi mangyayari yan or no, definitely, ito yung trend ngayon. So it is very futuristic and I super love it. So, with this, I want you guys to stay tuned um, because the Philippine Star releases four anniversary issues, okay? The first one is tomorrow, July 15, fourwheels.ph. Now, the second one is on July 22, and that naman is for property report PH. Siyempre, you want to know rin yung future ng property, di ba? Kasi mga investments and so forth. Third naman is on July 27, which this is a series of articles launched by different writers from the 34th anniversary to talk about what's next. Looking back in between, lessons from the past, the problems of the present, and forecasts for the future. Uh, high level. <laughs> and lastly, ang ating um, fourth installment is on July 29, which are essays written by key opinion leaders on what if, understanding what we are and where we ought to be. Okay, so aside from looking forward to the 36th anniversary of the Philippine Star, I'm pretty sure that a lot of our viewers are also looking forward to the, in to the innovations in the automotive industry, especially with car features. Kaya naman, we have a treat for you. We interviewed a bunch of people, prominent people, who can share some ideas. So let's hear from our friend, Sean Velasco and his answer to the question, what features do you want to see in the car? Hmm. Nasa na si Sean. So I'd want to see anti-glare on the windshield as some drivers tend to put their high beams on and neglect other drivers and to forget to respect other drivers on the road. Hi, Manny! Manny's back. Ayan. I'm sorry, I lost my connection. I don't know what happened there. Ganyan For talaga while, sa... Ganyan talaga sa atin. And I think maraming nakaka-relate. <laughs> maraming nakaka-relate na. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we just that. listened to, to Sean and um, his idea of what car feature he would like to see. And... Interesting yung kanyang idea, no? Parang dapat nga may car manufacturer na nagumuha nun. True. True. That's a very nice uh, concept. I would like to have a car with that. May nabasa akong idea what? before. May, may nagsabi na tao na sana, is something about sana, um, automatic na matatanggal yung right signal mo kapag 
ang tagal-tagal na niyang naka-on. Kasi di ba may mga cars na parang pinababayaan lang nila yung signal light nila na right or left. So, hindi alam ng mga nasa likod kung ano ba talaga mangyayari sa kotseng to. Tapos parang it would be nice kung may tech na nagbabantay noon. Ayan. Actually, we see a lot of um, misuse and abuse of the hazard lights also, especially here. Especially here, and especially when it's raining, no? Parang everyone will turn on their hazard lights, and we should actually have like a topic talaga na hiwalay on this, no? Parang what funky car feature you would like to see in your car. <laughs> so. so, of course, meron tayong kanya-kanyang trip pagdating sa cars at sa mga features nito. But now, I would like to ask you, Manny, dahil nandito ka na, what are your top five cars of the year and why? Okay. Let's see now. My top five picks are number one, the ugly duckling that turned into a swan is the Toyota Avanza. <laughs> ugly to duckling Yes, uh, it's super improved. It's really the most improved player of the year. Um, now it's actually a very desirable car. That's what that's something I couldn't say with the previous models. So mm -hmm. great job, Toyota on the Avant. Agree. Totally agree. My second is the Geely M Grand, which is a very, very well equi equipped and surprisingly big subcompact sedan. So it actually kasi laki na niya compact sedans. Pero yung presyo niya <laughs> subcompact pa rin. Mm -hmm. My third is a Cherry Tigo 8 Pro. I got to drive it up to Mount Samat just last month and it was a revelation. The power, wow. the luxury, the comfort. It's up there with even there, I say it, the German luxury brands. Whoa! Matulin siya, di ba? Yes. Of course, my next choice is even more matulin. <laughs> and a lot more expensive also, it's the Audi e-tron. It's a pure electric vehicle. Um, it's actually a sports car. It's an electric sports car that's... That is also a sedan. So it's actually practical and it doesn't run on gasoline. It's pure electric. Ganito yung tipong mamanehuhin ni Iron Man, eh, di ba? Mga, mga ganyan. Exactly. In fact, yes, um, Tony Stark drove an e-tron in one of the Avengers movies. Oh, there you go! <laughs> bagay na bagay. Astig. Right. And last but not least, is the Mazda CX-5 all-wheel drive turbo. They also just launched it last month, and mm -hmm. it's a ball to drive. 400 newton meters of torque. When you floor the pedal, it's, again, it feels like a sports car. But at the same time, it's very practical and still very comfortable. Astig, astig. I like your picks. I would uh, definitely include them in uh, my favorites as well i totally understand like all the justifications and of course dahil uh itinapo naman sa akin ni Manny yung question pabalik about the top five car picks ako naman i would like to uh share my insights so first like Manny, the mazda cx5 turbo bucket dahil a few years ago uh when i went to Malaysia, we were there for a totally different event, but I got to drive the Malaysian CX-5 Turbo, and I loved it. It was so awesome because just like Manny said, ang, ang tulin niya, ang sarap niya i-drive, and of course, being a Mazda, they have like this um, person, uh, like the rider and the horse as one, so the driving dynamics are really awesome. Like, it's really a driver's car that you would want to drive yourself, especially on long road trips where you have open roads. It's awesome. I'm so happy we're finally getting this model. Uh, my number two car pick is the Geely M Grand. Just like Manny said, panalo siya. Kasi parang 
subcompact car nga yung presyo, pero makukuha mo yung parang almost full-size sedan. So that, I think, is the magic of Geely. They get to offer products na are of great value for money. You pay less than, I think, what you would have with the competition, especially if they're from parang mga malalayong bansa pa. But uh, here, you can enjoy all the the assets, like all the features. And then it's so affordable, it's so comfy, and it's nice to drive. Kaya pasikat ng pasikat yung Gili. And and dami na talagang forums where they discuss everything Gili. And the M Grand is one of their latest products. And I'm also a sedan person, so I kind of like this uh, M Grand. Pick number three. Oh, the Mitsubishi Expander. Need I say more? It's Mitsubishi's number one selling product right now. So, kahit na yung previous gen model niya, parang yun na yung pinakamalakas na produkto ng Mitsubishi in the Philippines. And then now, pinaganda pa nila. So, ang daming improvements. Basically, they made it like classier. It looks better. So, I mean, it's only adding more pros to something that was already parang hiyang na hiyang sa Filipino public, I think. And because I can see how it works with like Filipino families and people who want to bring a lot of stuff, I think Expander definitely is like one of the all-time favorites ng mga Pinoy. Pick number four, Toyota Race. Actually, love ko rin talaga yung Avanza. Kasi nga, katulad ng sabi ni Manny, parang... Sobrang laki ng talon eh. Parang dati ito yung Avanza, basic, ginagamit ng mga banda para ipagkasya yung drums nila, pero utilitarian. Tapos parang sobrang gumanda. Kaya sabi ko, okay, ano pang ibang produkto ng Toyota ang nagustuhan ko this year? Well, there's the Toyota Race because parang finally, umasok sila sa segment na to. Ang tagal nilang hindi kaya nag sa segment nitong parang subcompact crossover. And finally, they did. And I think that says a lot. Dahil sobrang lumalakas rin talaga yung demand. And being a Toyota, I guess people can always bank on reliability, resale value, availability of parts. Parang wala ka nang dude. It, it's a safe bet. So I think uh, the Toyota race is also one of the favorites of, of the public. And then my Fifth pick is the Honda HRV. Kasi naman, first of all, it looks really nice. And Honda kasi, yung ugali ng brand na yan, lagi silang nagbibigay ng product na extra comfortable, extra fun to drive. And oh, totoong medyo mas mataas yung presyo niya than the competition. But, well, at the end of the day, you get what you pay for, di ba? So if you're kind of fussy and you want magaan yung steering wheel and you want comforts na hindi masyadong pangharabas. Parang alam mo yun, Honda is definitely a brand that will not let you down. You'll always feel comfortable and you'll always feel happy with your choice. Parang worth the premium that you're going to pay. So there! Um, kayo naman mga viewers, share nyo naman sa amin ni Manny what your top five or kahit top one pick is in the new cars available in the Philippine market. You can um, join us in the conversation through our comment section down below and uh, share nyo rin kung bakit nyo ito napili. Okay? Sana yung mag-share. Tapos pag-usahin namin later on. Ayan. Oh, nga. Hearing about the top picks make me curious lang. I'm pretty sure kung may napupuso ang top five picks meron na rin napupusuan for the next car purchase. Oh yes, agree ako dyan, Manny. Pakinggan natin ngayon ang masasabi ng ating kaibigan na si Eugene Matthew Uy sa tanong na, what is your next car purchase and why? Car purchase would be Toyota Rush. Uh, it's a small, uh, it's a compact SUV. Um, well, the primary reason for this is I need a daily. Uh, this is my car actually. Uh, this is my only car. I'm using this uh, to go to work and um, well, given our road conditions and uh, soaring uh, gas prices, I need a practical daily which has um, high ground clearance and um, 
uh, fuel efficient as well and uh, well it's, it's literally like, like a go anywhere car so that's what I'm looking for and um, the uh, Toyota Rush uh, checks all the boxes um, for the next car uh, given those criteria. It's Toyota Rush, ang kanyang pick. Kasi naman parang meron talagang trend, di ba, Manny? Parang dun talaga, dun talaga nag-gravitate mga Filipino ngayon. Parang yung mga people carrier kind of na may mataas na vertical ground clearance na hindi sobrang mahal. Parang ito yung mabenta sa atin eh. Yeah, that's true, Angel. Actually, a lot of people really appreciate high ground clearance now from mm -hmm. mostly because of the condition of our roads mm -hmm. and the occasional flooded streets actually Baha. Yeah, occasional mm -hmm. Baha talaga. and uh, one one uh, strong rain flash flood that anywhere so a high ground clearance is very useful and before you have to buy the very expensive big suvs but now mm -hmm. with this these more affordable crossovers you get that high ground clearance also Without I, I, exactly. Price. Exactly, and I I think that's that's very interesting that you you kind of pointed out you call them small crossovers, not a small SUV, because I, I I see a lot of people use SUV very loosely, and and they call like oh it's a subcompact small SUV whatever, but then. May pinagkaiba pa rin yun, di ba, Manny? Parang pag SUV or cross crossover. Well, technically, SUV should really be used for those who have four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. And um, examples of this would be the Fortuner, the Everest, the Montero Sport, the Nissan Terra, the Isuzu Mio X. Those are really traditional SUVs. Um, of course, the granddaddy of them all, the Range Rover, the FJ mm -hmm. Cruiser. Yon ang talagang SUV. Um, the crossovers are actually sedans na tinaas yung platform niya. Most of them, siguro 80-90%, are actually front-wheel drive only. Mm. They don't even have four-wheel drive. So, okay. the advantage nun, of course, less cost, easier mm. to maintain, um, and easier to drive, more comfortable also. I would I would imagine na parang it's like nagde-drive ka pa rin ng sedan except mas mataas siya tapos mas spacious siya pero yun nga eh di ba pag SUV yun yung mga dine-drive natin sa farm yung mga medyo in off-road ng konti yes. di ba so guys yun yung distinction most of the time when uh, we like to call a vehicle small SUV it's really a crossover. Take it from man, <laughs> the expert definition. <laughs> so now that we are talking about these um these small, medium-sized crossovers, ituloy na rin natin at uh, palalimin na rin natin ang ating usapan tungkol dito. Diba? So they, they yes. think very popular. Yeah. There's no denying na yung popularity nito has grown over the years. Mm -hmm. Kaya naman, it has branched out into a huge selection. It's really the biggest segment now and also the most competitive, but the demand is there. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this type of vehicle, good thing na marami yung pagpipilian, pero with so many options, it can be hard also to differentiate between models. That's true. Kasi ang an dami nga eh, may SUV, tapos may crossover, tapos may subcompact crossover, tapos iba-iba yung parang price segment niya. So, specifically, kapag small crossover ang pinag-uusapan, meron ding confusions. Um, and one of them na nga is what makes it an SUV and what makes it a crossover. And may mga tanong din about the features of these small crossovers and also how they are compared to, you know, other types. So, let's let's uh, clarify, no? Um, what is the Appeal. Well, we mentioned some, no? But what are the appeals of mga small crossovers natin? Well, number one, I think, siguro the top two okay. would be affordability and easy to drive. True. Because the fact na hindi siya four-wheel drive lowers the cost. And then yes. the fact na yun nga, parang sedan siya na pinataas, pinalaki, 
parang best of both worlds, I guess. Hindi lang natin, yes. hindi lang natin talaga madadala sa putik-putik na malalim. Yes, wag lang yung mga hardcore off-roading talaga. <laughs> okay. But um, do you think, Manny, no. that this segment will continue to flourish? Oh, definitely. In fact, it will grow. Um, it might actually render the sedan, ex- if not extinct, at least an endangered species. Aha. So before we used to have station wagons, if you remember, until maybe the 80s, 90s. Oh my now, God, yes. Uso, yes. uso yun, no, station wagon. Yeah. But now they're actually they're pretty much extinct. Um, some, a very few few manufacturers make them. So parang ultra niche model na siya ngayon. Mm-hmm. But the sedan is slowly going in that direction as well. Kasi iba yung versatility ng crossover eh, and SUV. Mm-hmm. That's true. Ako pa naman parang nung yung kinalakihan ko was really sedan, like subcompact sedan, yung mga Honda Civic. Parang ano na nga siya, no? endangered species. I mean, parang mas mabenta lang talaga yung mga crossover types. So it looks yeah. like yun talaga yung direction natin. Okay. And um, what in your opinion can we look forward to when it comes to these things? Well, more even more models, more variants for each model, even more brands actually. Kahapon lang may nag-launch na another new Chinese player, pero all electric SUV siya. As in uh, lahat? For, yes. Um, 2.5 wow. million. And it's an SUV na fully electric. So that will be the direction. Mag-merge na since we started to get a lot of electrified models. And with the growth of crossovers, I think we're going to see more and more hybrid and pure electric crossovers and SUVs in the near future. Oh my God, that says a lot, I think. Because kung hindi na natatakot yung mga negosyante to bring in, to invest and bring in electric vehicles, ibig sabihin, napag-aralan nila yan, di ba? Para may studies sila yan na this, this is going to work, most likely. So, patungo na nga talaga tayo doon. Oh. Okay. So, talaga namang hindi may pagkakaila na swak sa, pang- sa pangangailangan ng marami ang uh, ating crossovers na tinatawag din nating small SUVs. Kung ang SUVs ay patok sa mga pamilyang Pilipino, syempre, hindi naman magpapatalo ang mga EVs or electric vehicles tulad ng nabanggit namin. Isa rin ito ang market segment that we have to watch out for. And um, like we are identifying, more and more brands are coming in, they're investing, they're giving us electric products. So it's so exciting. True. Sabi nga nila, electric vehicles are the future. The, susp- the sustainability aspect of EVs makes it appealing to the market kasi. The sustainable efforts of the car industry is a great step towards a greener future. And of course, we have SM Super Malls joining us in this revolutionary innovation. Wow, that's right. Actually, I was also pleasantly surprised because as part of their effort to create a safer and greener future for all, SM Super Malls actually launched the first ever in-mall free charging stations free ha in select metro manila mall so let's hear and learn more about this good news from sm through this video as the price of gasoline continues to fluctuate we foresee that the country will truly transition into finding alternative transportation that is cost efficient and also uses clean energy electric cars are one option that we see as the wave of the future that is why we installed electric vehicle charging stations already in 12 of our malls in Metro Manila. And the goal is to install in all our malls nationwide by end of 2023 or sooner. SM is committed to a safer and greener future. And this is only one way to help the planet through sustainable options such as electric vehicles. At the moment, our 12 electric vehicle charging stations are in NCR, and these support U.S. and European electric vehicle brands. We have partnered with the Department of Energy, the DOTR, and DTI as part of our commitment to help the government with its renewable energy 
and Sustainability Initiative. And we are the first small chain to establish these electric vehicle charging stations and it is free of charge. All of this is part of our SM Green Movement Initiative. We encourage the use of electric vehicles and bicycles as well. Oh, that, uh, this is really exciting news. And there's a lot to unpack in there. I mean, first of all, um, we have it available. And I mean, I think that's exciting because first of all, it's free. And then next, I mean, free yung charging. And then sigurado pang may parking slot ka pagpunta mo sa mga selected SM malls na ito. Yes. In fact, nagulat ako when he said that by end of 2023, they will have EV charging stations for all SM malls. Wow. So that is really fantastic and that will really help get the ball rolling as far as electrifying our car industry is concerned. Definitely. I mean, I think so. And there are so many SM malls in, in different parts of the country, diba. Right? And another thing that I found interesting was that he mentioned that um, the charging stations are compatible with not only the European charging um, protocol, but also the U.S. ones. Because, diba Manny, parang I think what our viewers don't, what many of our viewers may not know is that hindi parket EV, iisa lang yung charging protocol niyan. So, basta charging station, you can just charge. Parang, diba may parang specific, may specific type of parang charging protocol ang kotse based on saan siya ginawa? Yes, actually, that's true. Uh, usually, the European brands have their own um, charging port or plug. The Americans, I think, have their own. And the Asians have a different one yet. Kaya medyo, it's like the iPhone versus Android um, port or cable issue na iba-ibang cable. So, medyo yun na issue ngayon for those who are putting up charging stations. Who will they cater to first? Kasi mahal din magtayo ng charging station. So, who will be the first users? The Asian brands, the European brands. So, so far, I think for the first few stations of SM, they're installing um, charging ports cap compatible with European brands. Okay, okay. I mean, that's just... <laughs> that's just nakakainis because now we have like this whole parang Android, Apple kind of... Uh, incompatibility going on. Sana nga may mag-imbento ng, I don't know, di ba magagaling yung mga Asians sa ganun, yung gagawa sila ng adapter. Adapter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Para compatible yeah. na. Parang nung nagkaroon ng Nintendo siya family computer, pwede mo laruin yung pala ng family computer sa Nintendo. That's true. That's true. Sana ganun kadali. But yeah, somebody should figure this out and really, it will help a lot. Yeah, definitely. And of course, um, there's the that's the private sector coming into play. But then we also need like support from the government. So, siguro, I would like to ask you, Manny, what in your opinion uh, are among the reasons that parang mabagal yung adoption ng EVs dito sa Pilipinas? But tayo nahuhuli? Yeah, well, I think number one would be the price. Um it would have really helped if the government was able to give incentives to the car companies who want to sell hybrids or electric vehicles. I think in Japan, uh, a Prius would cost more or less the same as an Altis. Pero dito malaki yung premium. So, because there's no incentive um, granted by the government. Kaya talagang mas mahal siya lalabas. I think mm -hmm. that's the number one thing. It's it's really now it's becoming a car. The hybrids and the electric vehicles are becoming cars for the the affluent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still not as um, attainable as you know your ordinary uh, gasoline or diesel engine model. Mm -mm. That, that's a nice way of putting it. Na parang uh, if, no matter like how green you are, tree hugger, but if you can't afford it, diba? Parang then may, may challenge done. So we really need help from the government as well. Because so far, we yes. have incentives, no? So, okay. Uh, and the second issue is, of course, range anxiety. Because mm -hmm. there are charging stations on the highway. 
So even if you have a fully charged battery with 300, 400 kilometer range, mm-hmm. ka sa bagyo, pwede ka na makakabalik. So you have to find a place to charge there and most probably overnight pa kasi wala namang mga quick charging stations doon. Oh, most nga. cars can be charged kahit sa home outlet, pero mabagal. Hindi siya quick charge. Mm. So you can overnight yan to bring your battery back to full capacity. So yun ang isa pang issues. So mm. some... I think a good start there would be the Shell station in Mamplasan, which has a charging station. Oh, uh, okay. along. So that's that's a start, a very good start. So where is it? Where is it loca- located? It's Mamplasan, no? Yes, it's the Mamplasan Shell station, but it's northbound actually. Not so kung pabalik na sila, okay. So kailangan mapaabot nila pabalik. Malakas ba sa gastos ng EV battery charge money kapag stuck tayo sa traffic? It depends. Um, okay. I actually haven't tested an EV in heavy traffic for mm-hmm. a long period of time. Mm-hmm. But most of them, actually, if a full charge can last at even 300, 350 kilometers, you can actually use an electric vehicle Monday to Friday to and from work. And then wow. charge again Friday night. So, wow. kaya yon. It's actually just for long distance driving na medyo magkakaroon ka ng range anxiety. Okay. Okay. That's actually mo- re- quite reassuring to hear. And and if ever, kunyari, uh, theoretically, may, may kotse, may EV tayo, tapos, hi, naubusan tayo ng charge. Yung solution nun is may dalakang spare battery siguro, no? And then pwede mo ipalit. Or... Uh, unfortunately, you cannot swap batteries sa my electric vehicles because ah. those things are huge, heavy, okay. and very expensive. Okay. So I think it costs as much or even more than the engine itself. Kaya oh. you really have no alternative but to charge it. I see. I see. Okay. Then the infrastructure definitely has to come first. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about brands that are here now and showing a lot of promise when it comes to EVs. Oh, you, you mentioned know, like, Yeah, talking about brands, the surprising part about electric vehicles in the Philippines is right now the leading EV car brand is actually Porsche. Oh. Um, they were the first to sell electric vehicles in the Philippines over a year ago. And so far, they, I don't know the exact number, but I read somewhere that they are they've sold the most number of EVs in the country. Wow! And now, um, BGE Cars, which also brings in um, Audi, combined, I think, is probably the leading EV distributor or importer in the country now. What an interesting market behavior, no? I mean, Philippines, sinasabi natin, de, ano, wala masyadong buying power ang mga tao dito. And yet, we have stops like that. Parang, ang lakas ng benta ng, I mean, very, very promising yung benta at pagpasok ng EVs in a luxury car brand. So parang, mm-hmm. and, ano, no? Yes, and, and considering both those two German brands have a lot of models available, those two EVs are actually their top selling models now. So oh they're in demand. Gosh. Oh my gosh, that that's that's nakakatuwa because that that tells me na may interest naman pala <laughs> yung right. yung Filipino public sa ganito. Parang siguro nga konting push na lang, konting Philippine government, baka naman, diba? Baka naman pwedeng konti pang incentives diyan. Uh, what naman do you think, Manny, are the among the best value electric cars and uh, also siguro the best designed ones? That pag electric parang futuristic, di ba? Yes, actually, they're all, they all, most of them look very futuristic, but there are some that look like they're regular internal combustion engine siblings, like the, uh, well, especially when you talk about hybrids, there's yes. hybrid family, uh, hybrid Altis, um, Corolla Cross. But when you talk about electric vehicles, there are, most of them are 
specific models like Nissan Leaf, which doesn't come with a gasoline um, version. It's really definitely only an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it's also one of the best-selling EVs in the world, the Nissan Leaf. Yes. I so, see. Yes. Um, Cherry, I think, has one of the lowest-priced EVs, the 1.9 million Cherry Arizo 5E. It's a sedan. Um, it's available at indent order. So if you're talking about value and you want to experience electric um, motoring, then mm -hmm. I think that would be the best way to start. The one they showed at the Mias, diba? It was in Mias, and I also got uh, a chance to drive it. I was able to use it for several days. It's really, really the future. It's like driving the future. Oh, that's awesome. I get naman ako. <laughs> yes, it I was want to... weird when you're driving. Tapos walang sound yung engine at all. Mm -hmm. So, and it's very, very fast. Iba kasi that's yung torque awesome. yung electric vehicle. The, you get maximum torque at zero RPM. So, when wow. you really yeah. press the pedal, sisibat siya talaga. Achoo! Yes. Well, EV. Ako nga. Fun siya, guys. Promise. Kaya... I strongly recommend that you, I mean, be curious and try to investigate more. Parang ano ba tong mga EVs? Maybe you want to test drive it. Maybe you want it as your next car, di ba? Kung di nyo man bilin, at least nasubukan ninyo. What do you think, Manny, would it take for more Filipinos ba to, ano, to start going more for EVs? Right. two things now. Mm. Price and more charging stations. Oh, nga naman. And especially if the gas prices remain high, very compelling talaga to have an electric vehicle. Tama, tama. Tapos plus points na lang yung, well, I reduced my carbon footprint. I'm <laughs> helping to address climate change to some degree. Astig. It, it's, you know, it's, it's really... It's really nice that these are all happening and that they're becoming more and more attractive. That's true. <laughs> Electric vehicles are indeed a smart choice for the environment. Of course, iba iba pa rin preferences and considerations ng mga tao when it comes to cars. That's true. Meron talagang different priorities yung mga tao based on their personality, based on their use. So, Conforme sa tao, ba, how they use their cars. And speaking of priorities, preferences, and considerations, let naman us listen to our friend, Fernelito Cabrera, as he answers the question, what are your considerations for buying your next car? What ba? My considerations are high fuel mileage uh, due to high fuel cost, automatic, to combat Metro Manila traffic, decent engine power for weekend long trips. So, practical siyang tao, no? Parang yun yung mga considerations niya. And, oh nga naman, di ba? Parang yung gastos. Yung fuel, dal mahal. Parang nagiging grades na ng ibang tao, no? High school. <laughs> yung presyo per liter ng fuel. <laughs> yes. Although, ano yan, na Talagang parang he wants that cake and the icing too kasi he wants fuel efficiency but he also wants power for long trips wow. actually very ano talaga yun um, who wants to get stuck behind a slow bus or a tricycle on one of those mm -hmm. national highways when you're you're going to LU and you're you're in Tarlac and you want to overtake iba yeah. talaga yung power na rin eh. that's true it is very important na makapag Na meron kang ano, power to really overtake with confidence, di ba? Kasi minsan, matitigas yung ulo ng mga tricycle drivers, ayaw nila magpadaan eh. Kaya kailangan, okay, may, may pull. Pero, kailangan mo rin ng displacement para sa ganun, di ba? <laughs> Unless EV ka. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of the balance. So, aside from the considerations mentioned by Fernelito, Isa talaga sa mga considerations ng maraming tao when it comes to buying a car is pagiging swak nito sa bulsa, di ba? Parang, I think, meron ka talagang budget and then based on that budget, doon natin malalaman kung 
ano ba talaga yung ma-afford mo o hindi, di ba? So, sige, pag-usapan naman natin ngayon yung budget cars. I think never mawawala yan sa conversation. So, Manny, what do you think are among the brands that provide a lot of value for money? Well, I think the no-brainer answer to that obviously would be the top two selling brands in the Philippines, Toyota and Mitsubishi. Mm -hmm. They really offer a lot of very well-featured or full-packed um, full-featured models. Mm -hmm. um, Toyota and Mitsubishi. Of course, the new generation China brands really pack a lot of value also. Sobra-sobra mm -hmm. actually. In fact, pinapa, sinasabayan nila yung mga luxury features ng mga luxury German brands. Yung mga um, semi-autonomous features nila. The cars can break automatically. They can, they can actually hold the car in a straight line if you're drifting off your lane. Mm -hmm. Sobrang, ano, sobrang smart na talaga nung mga safety features ng mga kotse ngayon. It, it is really impressive yeah. because, I mean, diba before there was like some kind of stigma uh, amongst people when they say na parang, oh, like, um, it's, it's from China. I'm not so sure. I haven't really long tested it before. But I think now, Patas ng patas na yung confidence level ng mga tao eh. Kasi it's so, it's so tempting, the package, na parang for this price, you can get all these features and then it looks nice pa. And then like you said, all the smart features. So you're right, parang sila talaga yung parang nagsishine ngayon sa ating market. But um, ikaw, Manny, when you, when you consider a car, what are the basic car features that you look for or that you at least expect them to have? Well, now we really are very spoiled. This this era of um, affordable crossovers, nakaka spoiled talaga. You have panoramic sunroofs. Um, you have cruise con smart cruise control. Mm -hmm. You have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Everything is touchscreen. Um, ang dami talaga features din. So what's basic for what used to be luxury features are actually basic now. Mm -hmm. So, kaya, it really depends on the price range. That's true. When it comes to expecting what the basic features are. That's absolutely true. Oo nga, kung, kung pang entry level yung budget mo, huwag ka naman mag-expect ng langit, di ba? Parang, hello, <laughs> it has to make sense. But yes, I, I do agree that many of the, the features that used to be pang luxury lang. Parang ngayon, nagiging mainstream na, no? Kahit nga yung, ano eh, yung autonomous parking, yung self-parking, yes. parang diba dati, kala ko pang luxury lang yun. Ngayon, pati mga, mga middle range meron eh. So, yeah. that, that's good for the consumer. Um, so, since these are the basic features, what naman are the features that you think set some brands or some models apart from the rest? I think that would be, I would refer the toys to that question. Kasi ang dami features niya, like yung na-mentioned ko kanina, yung panoramic sunroof. Yes. Some people don't need it. They don't even like it. But some yeah. really love it. Mm -hmm. And another cute feature now would be the ambient mood lights inside the car. Oh, yeah. Time, it used to be, I first saw it in the Mini Cooper. Now mm -hmm. I see a lot of cars having it. You can mm -hmm. customize the color of the interior lights depending on your mood, even on your music. <laughs> um, yung mga vans na yon, they're really super posh, super plush. Captain mm -hmm. seats, um, Ottomans, um, parang aircraft style headrests. So, You're right. Ganda talaga. Ang ganda nga, I love yung mga may parang aircraft style na, na setup. Di ba? Parang you can um, put your feet out long and then parang feeling mo nasa business class ka. With the business class talaga. <laughs> yes, yeah, Tig. So, um, if you were to give advice to first-time buyers of a car, uh, what would you recommend for them to do? 
uh, as they make their big decision to purchase their car? I would say, number one, make a short list of your top uh, choices. Then go online, look at all their specs, look at the specs that you want, whether you're into luxury or convenience features or safety or power, then you make your own spreadsheet, list them all down, and that just compares them all side by side. Um, I think that's the practical way, objective way to do it. Pag may tie, then maybe let the price or the looks or even the color of the interior be your tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I do think that's a very systematic way of going about it. Kasi pag may nagtatanong sa akin, parang what car should I buy? Say ko, ano bang kailangan mo? <laughs> Anong paggagamitan mo ng car na yan? So you're right. It depends kasi sa priorities nila. So guys, you have to identify. Ano bang gusto nyo? Parang safety ba priority nyo? Fuel efficiency? Presyo? Or itsura dahil pagyayabang nyo yung car nyo, accessory. And then gawin nyo yung, ano, yung chart tulad ng sabi ni Manny. And then at the end of the day, when you select na ito yung mga kandidato ko, depende na yan sa budget mo. <laughs> diba? Ano bang kasha? Anong swak sa bulsa? So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It, and, and siguro last is you go to the dealer and drive it yourself. Kasi baka naman yes. parang on paper ang ganda-ganda pero yung pala hindi mo feel. Or yung iba parang exactly. hindi siya kuwera mo pero parang sarap pala i-drive, di ba? I was about to add that. Buti na unahan mo lang ako. But Ay. definitely, never buy a car without test driving it first. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, there. It's good that budget is among the considerations regarding the next car purchase. But something that we should Keep in mind, is the future developments of the industry itself. Yes, I mean, absolutely. That, that is correct. Mahalaga rin talaga na aware tayo sa mga forecasts and transformative trends in the automotive industry. And dahil dyan, we will also have a discussion about the future of all things on wheels. So first off, pakinggan natin ang masasabi ni na JP Tuason, Carlos Anton, Louis Ramirez about the future of motorsports. Mga sikat yung taong yan. What I want to see in the future for uh, Philippine motorsports is what I want to see in the future for uh, Philippine motorsports is you know to grow our grassroots racing. Now we've been working very hard over the last uh, nine years with Toyota to create more classes, more drivers, and develop young and up-and-coming racers so that they can come up the uh, ladder and eventually represent the country in international races. Well, I think the future of motorsports definitely in these kids that are racing now. Hopefully, my son and Nigo will be part of it. Uh, and I also think the future of motorsports will also be has a lot to do with the virtual world. And um, I'm hoping to see more Filipinos step up and start joining international races also in the uh, from the real racing and from the virtual racing because I think we just have all the talent and and that's like really proven especially in the virtual world where you know all the equipment is the same uh, the Filipino really excels future of motorsports in the Philippines uh, very bright I would say there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm and there's a lot of people who want to get into it and there's there are very good platforms like Bioscop and V1 that that keep the racing relatively cheap and I see it going much the younger drivers getting much better maybe F1 <laughs> So basically, ang parang take home ko sa lahat ng sinabi nila is that ang kabataan is the future. True. Actually, <laughs> racing really starts at a very young age. Kumisan, six years old, eight years old. Talagang yeah. kumakarara na. Mm -hmm. Karting. So that is the way. And hopefully, um, yun nga, grassroots racing, mas marami ang mag-participate, mas marami ang maka-afford. Astig. So, moving on. From motorsports, alamin man at pag-usapan natin ang future of motorcycling. Let's watch this interview with Philip 
Alvin Dia and Renzo Anquico. Well, motorcycling in the Philippines, I think, is one of the growing industries. And um, because of this, there's actually a lot of opportunities now. New brands coming in, um, not only in the form of big bikes, but also in terms of scooters. We also have a lot of uh, support coming from the finance sector. We have now available bank financing for the bikes. Um, there's a lot of people coming into the motorcycling fold, primarily because of probably the traffic situation in the Philippines or just a lot of pandemic bikers, as they call them, because people are exploring new ways and new, new, new things in order for them to enjoy the outdoors. I think um, motorcycling will definitely help, um, of course, with the traffic. Though. But it's not just about the transportation, it's about the lifestyle. In Ducati, we build communities with, so that they will look at the motorcycles, not just a mode of transportation, but it's something that can relieve their stress, something that they can do as a family, something that's really rewarding for them. Hello, mo, Manny. Isa lang masasabi ko dyan, it needs no further explanation. Pag nasa kalye ka, tumingin ka sa labas. Di ba ang daming motor? Yes. Ang daming motor. Ang daming motor niyan. Sa sa mga Parang ka nasa Vietnam na, na talagang outnumbered ng motor ang kotse. Mm -hmm. You're right. And plus with the pandemic, I think lalong nag-boom because like deliveries and then also people who just wanted mobility, di ba? And who didn't have the the luxury of having a car, then they, they needed to move around. So, mas madali bumili ng motor yeah. most of the time. That's true. And that's that's exactly true. And I can't imagine life now without Grab or Lala Move. Diba? Kasi parang dati, hindi, hindi ganun kasignificant eh. Pero ngayon, naging part of our lives. So, all all this is possible to like navigate through the traffic as well because of the riders na nakamotor. And it also brings work diba i mean more people are employed because they can they can take on this kind of job so i think it's it's really good for us yeah. so aside aside from motorcycles is a pang popular mode of transport and recreational sport ang cycling yes you heard it right so we're cycling din tayo kahit wala siyang motor with that let us hear the insights of jp carino regarding the future of cycling I think the future of cycling in the Philippines is we I think the future of cycling in the Philippines is we will have more people taking up the sport. We'd like to see new faces come into the scene. But of course we have to be realistic as well. Some people are heavily invested in building highways, some people are heavily invested in bringing in cars. But if we can uh, find a way wherein we can all coexist, we can build a better infrastructure for cyclists. No? I'm sure people will see the benefits of using bicycles as a means of transportation and at the same time for, for exercise and health. Manny, is cycling? Ka ba? I have a bike, but I'm very good cobwebs. So I have to keep it out. Ako din eh, parang for, for leisure lang siguro hanggang sa tindahan. But hindi yung seryoso, katulad ng mga nakita ko talagang hanggang sa work eh, nagsa-cycle sila. Pero di ba parang gumaganda naman yung mga katawan nila at saka wala silang carbon emissions. Yung hinihinga lang nila, ganun. So I, I think, di ba, they, they really have a significant space in our... Uh, in the bigger mobility pie. And I think maybe the issue now is about sharing the road with our cyclists. Yes, ayun, talaga. I think uh, we should give more respect and more priority also to our two-wheeled um, road users, especially the bicyclists. Kasi nga, talagang win-win yun eh. They're helping save the environment and they're becoming fit. Mm -hmm. So, medyo na hindi ako sa kanila. <laughs> Naigit din ako na sana may ganun akong, may ganun akong um, stamina to go all the way. Like from, you know, like across EDSA. Siguro with practice. 
Well, so we tackled the future of motorsports, of motorcycling, and cycling. So now naman, it's time to have a glimpse of the automotive industry's future through the words of Mr. Brent Ko. There's more brands coming in, no? Well, there's more brands coming in, no? More Chinese brands. Hyundai is coming in also, independently. So, uh, there are the brands coming in to reviving themselves, no? We have, of course, Toyota still takes... I think Toyota will still become... still continue its uh, number one position. Ayan. Maraming laman yung sinabi ni Brent, ha? Kahit simple lang. <laughs> Di ba? Parang... parang um, New brands coming in, new management, and yeah, I'm sure marami pang mga surprises coming up. That's true. Actually, ironic ka na during the pandemic, dun pa nagputokan talaga not just the number of models, but the number of actual car companies coming in mm-hmm. the Philippine market. That's true. And I, I guess that also says na our market is rather robust. Kahit sinasabi nila na medyo bumaba ng sales ng konti during the pandemic, pero mukhang pumipick up na siya uli ngayon. And I honestly think all these brands will not come in with so much enthusiasm and so much conviction if they don't know or ha- if they haven't studied that this is likely going to work in, in our market. That's true. So... Parang ang dami nating na-tackle, no? Ang <laughs> dami nating napag-usapan. And that's great. And that's also it, everyone, because syempre may time slot din tayo. We have now come to the end of today's special episode of Wheels Live. I, I truly, sincerely hope na nag-enjoy kayo, that you found our topics interesting. And um, Manny gave a lot of professional insight. Maraming salamat sa mga naglaan ng oras para tumutok sa amin at para makibahagi sa ating usapan ngayong gabi. Do you have anything else to share or say, Manny? Alam mo, Angel, hindi ko na malahin ng oras dahil talaga namang napaka-entertaining at educational ng mga topic natin na pag-usapan ngayon. Astig! Astig! Super tama ka and I'm sure na may maiuuwing bagong kaalaman ng ating mga mananood I definitely don't doubt that. We had like really rich conversations here. That's great. Siyempre, huwag niyo pong kalimutan na tomorrow we will release a special issue at baari kayong bumili ng print copy o kaya online copy na available on the go to our app. Make sure you visit www.philstarsubscribe.com whether print or on your mobile device. We got you covered. Yan ang ating parang modern kind of diaryo. Not necessarily yung napapan- nababasahin mo over breakfast. Pwede rin yun. Yun yung classic. That's what I like. But pwede na rin sa app, di ba? So kahit na on the go, basa-basa, feel star. So that's, that's super cool. We have so much in store for you here at Wheels PH. So sit back, relax, and keep checking Feel Star TV for our new episodes. So once again, we would like to express our gratitude to our sponsors whom this event would not be possible without. They are Hino Motors, Honda, Isuzu, Kia, MG, Mitsubishi, Shell, Suzuki, and Volvo. So on behalf of Wheels PH, maraming maraming salamat po for tuning in and joining us today in Wheels Live. Muli ako po si Angel Rivero. And I'm Manny de los Reyes. <laughs> and we are your hosts in this special episode of Wheels, Wheels Live. Live. That is brought to you Thank by you, Wheels PH. Thank you everyone. Sana talaga nag-enjoy Thank kayo. You. Thank you very much.